Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. Oh, it's good to sing that intro. And today we're reviewing the production version in motion V12. In my eyes, the best wheel currently out there on the market. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. But before we really dive into this device, big thanks to myewheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get a wheel like that, feel free to use their site and my discount code wrong way for 5% off. And if you're not living in Europe, feel free to check out any of the other affiliations linked below. I do receive kickback from these orders, so you also do support the channel uh, by purchasing from those links and using those coupon codes. So thank you for that. But this review will be very, very thorough, very deep dive, just like my EXN HT review recently. We'll talk about the good stuff and the bad stuff as transparently as possible. So in order to digest this information, I will structure this review just like the last one into six parts. Uh, first, we'll talk about the safety of this wheel and what the manufacturer implemented in this wheel to make it safer for daily use, for storing it at home, for using it in various weather conditions. Then we'll talk about the durability. How is this wheel made? What are its strengths? What are its weaknesses? What are the things you need to watch out for? Later on, we'll talk about the ride and how it is to actually ride this thing day by day. Uh, fast, slow, is it comfy? Should you use it off-road, street? etc uh, etc et and afterwards we'll talk about the performance in the fourth point what can you actually achieve on this wheel is it for everyone is it preferably for lighter heavier riders what's the range in the fifth segment we'll talk about the features and functionality of this wheel practicality uh, per se and this wheel is packed with features and tech so this will be a pretty big uh, segment on the video. And last but not least, we'll conclude everything and see if this wheel might be something for you or not. And this time I also included timestamps in YouTube. So if you slide around with your mouse or with your uh, finger on your screen, you, you should be able to see different segments in this video. So you can skip to the parts that are most important or if you just revisit the video, it's easier to see what's happening. In any case, let's get into it.
If we wind back the clock a little, I actually did already do a review on the V12, but it was a prototype uh, that was sent by Motion and there were some differences in this wheel. And at that time, the wheel was also kept secret, so I tried to ride it only with the, in the night. Uh, I couldn't really ride it in the day because then people would see it and stuff, so I wasn't really that able to stack the miles that uh, I needed and really experience it in all of the usual situations that I put all of my wheels through, it's like to put it through their paces. So with this wheel, I uh, got it actually uh, one month and two days ago. And in that time, I've put over 1000 kilometers on the clock, 1100 kilometers. So this wheel was ridden extensively. And as you can see it here, it was uh, actually tested thoroughly <laughs> by the mud, uh, off-road, on-road, in rain, um, in dry conditions, so that you don't need to do it and you can see how this wheel really performs. All right, so let's start with safety and have everything written down here so I don't forget about anything. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the battery safety on this wheel. And the battery packs here are very well protected. If you take a look at my um, teardown video, you can see that the um, batteries are not just like floating around like in Godways and sort of have their space inside of the wheel, but they're actually protected with another layer of plastic encasing both sides and they have like a dedicated plastic box, which is pretty thick uh, for the cells themselves. There's just one exit for the battery cables, the battery wiring, and it goes through the middle, which is also secured with silicone. And very importantly, these battery packs are rated at IPX7. So they're sort of water resistant, even a bit waterproof. I'll have to check the ratings, but uh, the battery packs just mechanically are very well protected here. There is also, you know, strengthened uh, plastic parts around this battery pack to keep it in place. And the battery pack itself uh, is actually screwed onto the shell of the wheel. This is really good to see. Uh, now, this is still no like, you know, t titanium plating or metal encasing, but it's already a very good standard for safety of a electric unicycle. The plugs they're also using for the main battery system are XT90. I plugs. Now, these are not uh, anti-spark plugs because there's XT90S, which is anti-spark. But uh, in my experience, when I was disconnecting and reconnecting the, the batteries, there was no spark when connecting the batteries. Now, this should be, this could be also because I didn't dis discharge the capacitors, but um, yeah, these connectors are a lot better than the XT60s, which you usually see on bigode wheels. And there are two connectors, one per battery, each deliver 40 amp and I think 500 volt actually of maximum voltage. So there's plenty of headroom to keep those safe for extended pro usage if you accelerate a lot, if you're a heavier rider, if you do a lot of inclines. So this is pretty cool. And those connectors are also under a small uh, rubber flap, which also does keep the water away a bit. If you want to have any more detailed info about this, feel free to, as said, check out my teardown video. I mentioned already that the batteries are rated at IPX7, but the whole wheel is actually weighted at IPX5 waterproofing. So this means that it's splash resistant. And I was riding this thing in mud, in rain, uh, light rain, a bit heavier rain, uh, but, well, maybe not super heavy, but there is no problems with this wheel, no problems, no issues with the bearings, They're, they make no sound uh, for those 1,000, already 300 kilometers on the clock here, uh, 1,100 of which are mine. So this is really cool. And this gives you really like a peace of mind that you can go with your wheel anytime you want. Now, of course, you ride differently when it's raining, but you still have the chance to go to work, to make a trip, make an errand with this wheel without any concern that, oh, did I put the silicone on nicely? Did I, uh, is, is this wheel really designed for rain? No, there's a rating, chill, this as well. Even if there is some sort of issue here, you have warranty and all of the major components are separated and encased, so there should be no issues with electricity and water. So that's also really awesome. Next thing is also the charge port in the back. And as said, uh, in comparison to Godway, this one is safe. I'll let me put it up. Uh, so here we have a charge port and there's no current flowing through it if uh, no charger is inserted. So if you insert a charger, uh, it's, the wheel recognizes that there's a charger inside and then it will start charging. And actually the charger wiring goes directly into the compartment here in the back uh, on, uh, on the motherboard, uh, which is just a really neat design and it's right next to the battery wires. Just 
tidy and clean. Even with all of those good things, there's still no smart BMS on this wheel. So there is no possibility to check the individual sets of batteries inside of each battery pack. So this is still something that could improve in the future. If something is wrong with the battery here, uh, probably it won't charge and we'll say, please repair. Uh, but uh, it, it would be just nice to see that you have just like a check mark, yes, but battery is okay, or you could actually check the individual voltages of each uh, battery set. So still some room for improvement in the future, but it's already pretty good. One thing I didn't notice on the batteries though is the battery manufacturer and battery model. So if you're from Inmotion or if you do know what the battery cells inside are, please comment below and then we can do some more calculations regarding battery safety and the maximum power draw of each pack. Now it is actually shown that each pack can handle 5 amps of continuous charge, but there is no discharge indication, which I would really like to see, as well as the cell manufacturer. I also really like the design of the motherboard. Now it's on top, which is already good. If, if you know water would come in, it, it doesn't stop there, it just goes further, further down. But the good thing is that the MOSFET, so the things that actually provide the power from the battery to the motor are actually on the side of the motherboard and they are directly on the massive heatsink uh, on, on this wheel. So usually what you see in King Songs and Gotway wheels is that you have a motherboard between the motherboard sort of sandwiched between the motherboard and uh, the heatsink there are the MOSFETs which isn't like the optimal uh, heat dissipation but here they really went for it and they're on the side and therefore they have better heat dissipation and there's actually no fan in this wheel and I'm a fan of that. I think the power limits in this wheel are also reasonably set. Uh, so the maximum power draw I saw here, which is the uh, phase current, I believe, was around 6,000 watts. And it was actually showing me uh, a good power draw, both on inclines and top speed. So in terms of phase current, I think this should be safe for the packs. However, still, I would like to see how many battery amps it's pulling, like on King Song wheels. And I said this battery cell manufacturer to see if those limits are really reasonable. But in my experience, um, it's possible to overpower the wheel and then it has sort of like a funny sound. And and it tilts forward so I think the limits here are set reasonably for the battery packs they're using. One of the things I don't like that much about the safety is the motor wires, the phase wires that go from the motor into the motherboard. They really seem kind of small and the insulation is really low quality. I see some cuts there and there's some sharp edges on the plastic along the routing for the cables which might damage them in the long run. So I think that this is a bit of a concern for me and if you can better look if your wheel has any issues along those phase wires and maybe some additional insulation or repair there would be needed. So I think Inmotion should work on that and make those wires thicker so they don't heat up uh, that much and they don't heat up the motherboard that much and to make the insulation better like the one we see for example on veteran Sherman wheels. In terms of riding and safety there's progressive limits so the lower your battery the earlier the tilt back so sort of the braking of the wheel uh, kicks in which is really nice there's limits as well and if you're doing a extremely strong incline it will actually notify you that hey you did too much it will lean back and won't allow you to ride so I like that the limits here are set reasonably both for top speed and inclines so you won't damage the battery. And along with that, there's also temperature readouts in five spots on the motherboard. Like veteran Sherman has one and it's in a bad spot. That's why they burn. And here we have five just to make sure that everything with the wheel is all right. You have one on the MOSFET, on the CPU, on the IMU, on the uh, motherboard itself. And the last one is in the motor, which is great. And we don't see that that often on wheels. So we can really check even just on the screen if everything's all right and the CPU uh, will limit or throttle the wheel or, or let you come to a complete stop with the wheel in case anything goes wrong or if the temperatures are too high. Really awesome. Now I didn't test that with like an extensive uh, hill climb test but I did some heavy off-roading, I did some uh, inclines and generally the temperatures were all right but now we are also in a cold season so I'm curious how it will perform in the summer. And sadly I had another issue with the safety of this wheel. It's uh, more regarding the long range test I did because I was doing the range test and at 4% battery it was already not letting me ride. Which is weird because you would think that you would stop riding when it's at 0% right? 
uh, which usually happens on other wheels too. So I kept riding until 0% uh, with a tilt back, which was still manageable for me to ride. Now, now don't get me wrong, I don't ride wheels until they like sort of break, uh, but usually I make those range tests really ex ex uh, extensive. I ride them as long as they can ride. So I kept riding and I still had 2%, 1%, 0% battery. And 0% battery I see very often on wheels. Like this is not something new. And uh, as I was riding, it, it was telling me to step off. I didn't step off. I know I should, but uh, it was still possible to ride. At some point it said, please repair. Uh, please repair, not please prepare. Uh, <laughs> I saw a lot of comments on Instagram about that. And then it just boop, cut off, turned off. Now I know it's not proper use per se, but I always test these wheels sort of to the extreme. I want to see what happens. And this is the first time something like that ever happened to me. I was riding already before on the Emotion V10, on the V11, on uh, got several Godways, on King Songs, on heavy tilt back for for a fair distance uh, and this never happened. Here it happened, so I think that Emotion should properly adjust the percentage meter, so 0% is actually when it tilts you back, it doesn't let you uh, ride anymore. And the second thing is that the tilt back should be stronger, so, so riders or nuts like me wouldn't ride anymore if the battery is really so depleted that uh, it will cut off soon. So I know it's a bit of an extreme test, but still I would like to have that improved. And last but not least, I really love how this wheel is laid out on the inside. The batteries are on the side and they are also shaped towards the shape of the wheel. They're not like cheap blocks like uh, Gotway uses and just like fits them in somewhere where, where, where they where fit. So, like cool on the EXN, we can fit like three, two in the back, one in the front. In the RSO, let's put them up here and not vertically. Uh, here they're really laid out on the bottom, uh, shaped like the wheel, which is really cool and which allows also this cool um, uh, clearance of the wheel, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but also the motherboard is on the top, it has a motherboard cover and it has many layers. Really, I, I, I really like the layout of this wheel. I think it increases the safety and if those compartments like the battery, motherboard, everything isn't that well connected with each other, water can't get through there easily. So really, really cool. And this is all about the safety of the wheel. Let's have a sip of water and get into the durability. So the first thing when I got this wheel right out of the box is it's just striking how well built or how well assembled this wheel is with all of its like plastic small seams in between the panels and it just looks so you know so chunky and so you know beefy so dense and I really like that. All of the plastics are also pretty durable pretty thick. I like that in general about this wheel. But what I do not like that much is that this wheel still doesn't have any frame and as we've seen soon we'll be on the channel the veteran Abrams actually has some plates in the back uh, of the wheel so sort of in a wheel well which protects the upper shell from like shifting to too much because all of this, which you can see here, is actually only held by eight screws, which are here in the back on the L hangers and the ridge here. So I would really just like to see some metal plating in the back, which would increase the structural rigidity of the wheel and also some roll cage in the front, like we can see on the veteran Sherman. Uh, I would really like to see some sort of like exoskeleton, something that would really make this wheel stronger. Because the problem is that if something happens here on those mounts, which are still plastic actually, there is some sort of, you know, uh, stronger, some sort of special shaping going on here with the plastic to make it stronger, but it's still plastic. And if, if that breaks, then you need to change the whole, whole shell of the wheel or whole half shell of the wheel. So at least some plate 
in this area would be cool or maybe even some plating in the back uh, to make this area stronger uh, i heard of one case where this thing was broken and then sadly you would have to wait for spare parts uh, or send back the wheel which is pretty annoying so please add more structural rigidity with metal to those wheels what i do like though is that it has a bumper both in the front and in the back and it actually saved this wheel a couple a couple times uh, in, in falls so this is pretty durable rubber and you can see that there are some uh, signs of use there and another cool part is when it f falls sort of flat in the front and damages some sort of these parts you can see here this is also already damaged uh, you can just replace those parts really easily uh, it's a matter of you know taking uh, apart the shell a bit but those parts should be also cheap to replace because there is just plastic here so the whole front element here up to here in the back this 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 with the panel here for the led strips it's just plastic so it should be cheap and easy to replace the, the same thing applies to the back bumper and i said this wheel already did survive a couple of falls once i fell from a small uh, quarter pipe which uh, sadly the insta360 didn't record uh, and once uh, andrew from the united states came along and had a fall on this wheel it fell it fell on the side and there's really not many marks on this wheel in terms of uh, the use so i think it holds up well and i think that all in all it is a durable wheel all in all i think that the connectors on the motherboard it's Itself, like the one that you see on the top are not the strongest ones and I pulled out actually two connectors off of the motherboard so not the connector itself but the connector with the thing that is attached to the motherboard uh, so I think that those could be more durable. Those are no, also not waterproof uh, connectors. I think they could improve that. The ones for the battery and for the BMS, they're pretty solid. And also for, uh, for the motor, well, they could use a single plug instead of three separate plugs, but maybe that's also for better current flow. Going back to, going back to the shell of the wheel, there is a lot of screws here. And by a lot, I mean just to remove the side panel, there's 10 screws to remove. And then you have another, you know, eight or something to remove from the side. And there's also some um, special hooks to remove and if you want to disassemble the wheel. So it's a bit of a, a long process to disassemble the wheel, but it's at the same time, I think more straightforward than on the wheels by emotion that were designed priorly. So all of the things just like move out a bit more simply. There's not so much force needed, but there's a lot of screws and most of the screws for the shell are plastic screws that go into plastic tubular inserts um, they're really thick and big those screws much bigger than Godways, but it's still plastic so i imagine that maybe after 5 10 maybe 20,000 kilometers those might get loose but we don't know we don't we, because we don't have the tests yet so i would like to see some metal screws into metal inserts uh, at some point like with an exoskeleton that would be really nice but that is not what we have here but still, I think it's better than the teeny tiny screws on Godways uh, and their pretty fragile uh, inserts and shell. But then the screws which are holding the battery in place and the main heatsink component and sort of like the cage here on the top are metal screws. Also, the trolley is sitting on uh, metal screws. So it's a mix of both. But in, but in general, I think it's pretty durable. On most of these screws that are metal screws, there's also Loctite. So this is, so this is sort of like a glue for screws that makes them not pop out if, uh, due to vibrations so this is cool but i didn't see any loctite or very very little loctite like minuscule amount on the l hangers which is a really important part of the wheel so maybe this was a oversight in the factory i hope they just put on loctite also on those l hangers naturally don't put any loctite on these plastic screws plastic and loctite go, don't go well together next up in terms of durability i also wanted to talk about the pedals on this wheel now my beef with those is that first up they don't have the best reputation i for example broke a pedal like this or maybe a generation prior to this on my inmotion v10 granted it was from jumps but still it broke and some riders also broke their pedals on v8s and v10fs even with regular riding so the, those pedals don't have the best reputation. I think that they just need a new design of those pedals. They feel pretty light and, and, and flimsy, made out of uh, aluminium. The grip tape is okay, but I wouldn't say it's the best. Maybe it's better on, on Kingsong wheels or, or, or Veteran Sherman. 
but yeah i just would like to see something new or something with spikes something that has just like a more interesting design i think those pedals just look so bland and so boring compared to in my eyes the interesting styling of the v12 so uh, luckily for me um, just a couple days ago uh, nilanova and uh, Pavel from Nilanova, actually the owner of Nilanova, uh, gave me those pedals, the Nilanova for V12, and they have been performing amazingly and gave me even more performance and stability out of this wheel. So with the Nilanova, those pedals are pedals that are lighter, they have studs, which is awesome, and they have also a adjustable um, tilt, which is awesome. So with these also bigger pedals, I think they're a bit bigger, this wheel rides even better. And honestly, I think this pedal is good for a V10, but for a pro wheel like the V12, they should have come up with something more durable and also just looking better. This is just so bland. In other areas of metal durability, um, the axle might not be the strongest because this is not a hollow motor design. So um, we'll have to just see, wait and see in the future if this is actually a durable design by Emotion, if it doesn't get loose. Now I did have some cracks, squeaks at some point, but then I opened up the shell and closed it again and then I had less. So I don't know if it's the plastic or if it's the axle itself, but I think that the design here inside is very similar to what we see on the Emotion V10F. So I hope it stays robust, but I guess we'll have to see about that if this wheel is really designed uh, for also heavier loads. On the same note of metal durability, the rim, uh, in my case, it's fine and I have did some you know moderately extreme riding on it but i didn't like bottom it out at uh, at any point the tire but my friend lars did from the netherlands and in the netherlands riding uc should be legal change that government of netherlands and he actually broke uh, bended the rim from one jump and then broke the rim by trying to straighten it and i've, I've heard also other reports of problems but in my use case, it was fine. So I guess if you want to just pop off uh, curbs at insane speeds, yes, the rim might break. And it, yes, it's not as durable as like mountain bike rims and motorcycle rims, but I think it's okay. Still, there is room for improvement. And as those products get more and more pro, then sh they should also get more and more durable. Next thing up on the durability list is the tire. Now the tire tread, even after 1,200, 1,300 kilometers is already really noticeable how it like wore off. This tire survives you know, two to 4,000 kilometers in good conditions uh, for the wheel. So I would really like to see a Kenda here, which can survive a lot longer than the CST. I think it's the C1866, C6188, something like that. Um, so yeah, just please note that you will need to make a tire change at some point of the, in the lifetime of this wheel, probably tops after three or 4,000 kilometers. Another minor thing about durability, the trolley rubber here in the back, very easy to fall off. Put more glue on there on the production line in motion. And, and last up on this list is first batch durability. Now, there is already some things I heard of in terms of mech mechanical issues on the first batch of wheels. I don't know how big the number is. Maybe it's super small, maybe it's moderate. I don't really know. Please comment below if you have any issues with your batch one uh, Emotion V12 wheel. I heard some problems with bearings or some problems with axles. So please comment below if you do have a V12 and some issues with it. Um, as usual, sadly, first batch wheels do have some issues uh, that arise, but still in my wheel, my e-wheel, <laughs> I, I don't have any major issues and it's performing fine. All of like those issues with axles or bearings or stuff, these are also warranty issues, so you will get it fixed, but you know, it will take some time. And with that said, this is all about durability. Let's now move on into the more fun stuff, into the ride. And there's so many points I have noted here because there's so much things to talk about. First up is the high foot plates. And the high foot plates are amazing. And the high clearance as well. Finally, I have no stress if I want to carve really hard. And it's really a 
great, great benefit of the V12 because if you even put a Sherman next to it, a monster V3, this has actually higher foot plates and this is great for off-road riding, for carving, for curbs, basically for everything that has something to do with riding in the wheel. Now, maybe it doesn't feel as, you know, planted as like a Tesla V2 with its super low foot plates, but I take this any day of the week over low mounted foot plates. So this is an amazing thing about the V12 and I can't overstate it enough. High foot plates are for the win. This is the highest foot plate, uh, 16 inch wheel by far. And it's also higher than most, really most, if not every, apart from the V12, 18 inch wheel or 20 inch wheel on the market. Really, really, really awesome feature and almost like a deal breaker for me in terms of electric wheels. It also has a very smooth power delivery. It's not like one of those like rattly wheels that have like this <laughs> when they start. It feels uh, very smooth. The power delivery is really nice, especially when going up to speed. It feels it feels just like very smooth, like riding on butter almost. Uh, but at the same time, it also feels sporty, but that I'll talk about in a second. It also has a lot of customization options and I'll talk about it in the features department because there's just so much it's, uh, it's a bit hard to grasp and also in, in the ride section. But as I configured the wheel for my use case, this is just like a, it's just like a blessing to really ride on this wheel. Feel free to check out my ride video on the V12 to get like my uh, in time emotions when riding the wheel. But as you can see by my smile, I just love riding this thing. Apart from being very smooth, as I mentioned earlier, it's also very sporty. So because it's a 16 inch, it's very effortless to accelerate, accelerate with it. It's, it doesn't feel like you have to pull a lot of weight uh, to, to accelerate, especially in the harder settings of this wheel. And, and when it comes to turns, um, we have a pretty wide wheel for its uh, diameter and it's really awesome to carve on this wheel. Now, it's not as stable and not as unwobblable and we already defined that as a word uh, a couple of videos ago, but at the same time, it's very precise in turns and it really allows you to shrink the apex of the turn. So tight turns of the, on this wheel are amazing, really, really awesome, as well as high speed turns, they're also really nice, but they don't feel as uh, stable as for example on a veteran Sherman. So this is sort of like a sports wheel. It can bounce around if you have like not perfect surface. You do feel more of the imperfections on the road than on a 20 inch wheel or even 22, 24 inch wheel. But at the same time, this offers you the amount of precision and sportiness uh, on this wheel. And for me, this is just like the perfect setting for a street wheel. Like on off-road, I'll talk about it a bit later. It's good, but maybe I would prefer something else, especially with a different tire. Uh, but in street use, this is just it. For long cruises, just, you know, hundreds of miles per day or like 50 miles a day, uh, you can get maybe uh, tired on this a bit quicker than on a Sherman, especially if, go, if you go off-road a lot. But still this feels great and because we have the 16 inch 16 by 3 inch uh, tire here it's also sadly prone to train tracking if you don't know what train tracking is the wheel will follow uh, its vertical sort of adjustment uh, based on what you are riding on so if the road suddenly goes like this then the wheel will try to force you on into the other direction so it's not as easy and i know comfy to ride as for example the EXN HT with the knobby tire or even the Sherman but that makes it also more precise and also more maneuverable. If you can imagine this is something in between like a uh, I would say 9 baud Z10 and a Gotway MSP. I think it's just a sweet spot where it doesn't become dangerous like it becomes on a Z10 uh, but it also doesn't make the ride so mellow like for example on the veteran Sherman. So in total I think really good. I just like the ride. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not over representing anything. This is just the real intentions here. When it comes to off-roading on this wheel, I think it's really capable, most notably on dry surfaces, because this tire, as you can see by the tread here, is just like so much tread is not the best on like leafy soil and I know mud, but it's relatively easy to climb up hills on this wheel. And it also feels very planted. There's also no pedal dipping. Uh, so off-roading feels okay. Uh, I would say that with a bigger diameter wheel, all of the bumps would be filtered out better, like on a 20 inch uh, or so on. But at the same time, also the high pedal clearance helps a lot when going through narrow trails, sort of like these small 
half pipes that you see on uh, downhill tracks for bicycles or just regular paths. So uh, a mixed bag here. I generally like to off-road on this wheel, but I much prefer to go on-road with it. For example, with the EX NHT, I'd rather go off-road on it. But here, I think the biggest strength is uh, on the road, but it's still pretty reasonable off-road. I would say though that for strong inclines and for like heavy off-roading, this just doesn't have enough torque. So in this case, it's better to have like a Kingsong 16X. So now let's move on to the pedal height settings of the wheel. I had to try all of the three. I knew that I would like the top one the most, but I tried all th three for your sake. It's also really easy to change the pedal height. It's just like four screws takes like five to 10 minutes, tops 15 minutes. Uh, so that is nice. So in the lowest setting, I would say it's best for long turns at high speed and uh, also when going slow, you feel more stable on it. But it's not really my personal favorite setting because I still have quite a bit of wobbles when braking and in general wobbles on the wheel. And, and, and my biggest gripe with the low pedal setting is that the shell becomes just bigger. So my optimum friction point for my leg is exactly here in my high pedal setting and then I don't touch with my knee or any uncomfortable uh, area of my shin in here. Uh, but in the lowest setting th this wheel just becomes really bulky and unwieldy. So I actually don't like riding this wheel that much in the low pedal setting. In the mid pedal setting is sort of in between the two extremes. Um, a bit less wobbles, a bit more clearance, uh, a bit better ergonomics for me and sort of everything in between. When it comes to the high pedal setting, this is my, by far my favorite and, and it actually has, in my experience, less wobbles than the lower one, which I was surprised to, uh, to, to see. Also best pedal clearance, best carving abilities and the best ergonomics as well. Keep in mind that this wheel is also very ergonomically shaped. So it goes sort of in on the top and this makes uh, just position on my legs uh, very nice and comfortable for long rides. I don't get tired of it uh, on it. <laughs> and also for hard turns, it really, it's really awesome to have not such a wide wheel because you can push the wheel inwards a bit more uh, with your uh, outside leg and also hold it with your inside leg of the of the turn so uh, it's just really nice to carve on on this wheel also because of the ergonomics along with the higher pedal setting of the wheel so high the higher the better generally i guess snoop dog will say the same i also think that the wheel is very effortless to ride uh, just because of the software that is here and especially like these small bumps uh, also off-road when going over uh, some roots when hitting some bumps it just seems to filter them out better like the there's almost like a bit of movement in the foot plates just the, the whole wheel tilts a bit when you encounter like a big bump and it sort of filters it out really well it always stays perpendicular to the ground which is really nice uh, unless you told unless you tell it not to but but i'll go into that in a second uh, it just feels so easy to ride, partially because of the small, smaller wheel diameter, the 16 inch, and partially also because of the software and ergonomics. Like I always take the long way with this wheel because I just feel like always wanting to ride it a bit more, which I don't have that much of uh, in my other wheels that I have. And a great thing is that there is also no pedal dip in pretty much any situation. On successive bumps, you won't find any. In long turns, high speed turns, maybe there's like the smallest teensy microsco microscopic uh, bit of uh, pedal dip, but you don't really feel it if you don't concentrate on it. So I usually ride the wheel a bit tilted forwards, as you can see here, quite a bit actually. Uh, so I accelerate a bit easier on it. And in terms of pedal dipping, there's just, it's perfect. Yep, it, it's, it, in terms of pedal dipping, there's really not, not much to complain about because it's perfect. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but needless to say, all of those performance things are unlocked if you have good power pads. And with the pads that are provided here, like they're nice here on the top and it's cool that they're like, you can take them off. They're like in plastic brackets, but if you don't have any power pads like these, you can't unlock any capabilities of this wheel. So feel free to use those. Those are the torque packs manufactured in Poland. Uh, this was my favorite setup for this wheel. Now you can also use like Grizzler pads, side pads. I also recommend those, but these were sort of my favorites for this wheel. But yeah, it just needs power pads to function right. 
you shouldn't do all of these all of this performance you shouldn't go fast on you know off-road if you don't have any of these so all of the all of the performance is available if you have power pants with that said in terms of the ride i would just like to conclude that it's always just fun i like riding on it i really like riding on it and usually i just ride on the v12 unless i need more range or i just need to blast on the streets uh, because sadly in warsaw everyone is going fast when in my car if i want to go on the uh, on the car lane i have to have uh, just a bit more headroom but mostly i just ride the v12 and any of my friends that know me from riding uh, in warsaw usually see me with this wheel now so uh, yeah i'm actually also gonna buy one so moving on now into the performance and in terms of performance the acceleration is really quick on par with godway or big old wheels around four seconds to 50 kilometers an hour and the top speed is 70 kilometers an hour via the speedometer here but i actually checked it via gps there is a discrepancy it just goes 66 around 66 kilometers an hour when it comes to the gps speed so generally the speedo is around five to ten percent off uh, so yeah that's that still a super quick wheel and for city use this is absolutely more than enough and all of this performance is also really easily accessible because of the smaller diameter wheel in terms of inclines i managed to go up a 35 degree incline without any major issues and i also managed to clear a 40 degree incline <laughs> Nie mów, że się spaliło. But after this 40 degree, degree incline, uh, this wheel just shut off, went into like a battery safety mode because it was overpowered. So up to 35 degrees is fine, but small asterisk, asterisk here, this is not a high torque wheel. Like, especially if you are a heavier rider, it will be easier for you to overpower this wheel. Uh, when I was going like upstairs, then pretty much every stair I was sort of jumping on, uh, the wheel was over overpowering. Uh, doesn't happen with any HT wheels uh, in my use case. So it is fast, but it's not a like wins all rules all thing, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's speedy, but it's not extremely torquey for so especially for heavier riders i think you won't have the same amount of power same amount of fun available on this wheel like the lighter riders of this world and this brings me to a point why no high torque like you just change the motor change the motherboard two versions available would be cool if it would just go 50 but with extreme torque like i think that a lot of riders don't even go over 50 kilometers an hour so if they would make a high torque version of it which would be like the ultimate blast off-road and for heavier riders with probably also more range this would be awesome so please in motion if it's possible high torque high speed or high torque you choose <laughs> when it comes to braking it i think it needs in general a bit more effort than other performance wheels but i think it's still acceptable you just need to lean into it uh, a bit more now you can adjust it as well in the app with the customizable settings but in general i found the braking to be just a bit worse than what i'm used to like i know the bigot rs uh, or the kingsong 16x but still it's very manageable in day-to-day -day use now keep in mind that when braking it the wheel might wobble and my, e and my best trick for that is just like to squat and put your ass down a bit lower uh, to avoid those wobbles but they might still be present even like small wobbles uh, if you don't have the right position so keep that in mind uh, this wheel is sadly prone to wobbles especially when braking turning is insane as i already talked about before you have suddenly you have just like a open snowless paradise of ski carving with this wheel it's really really that awesome and last but not least when it comes to range i made a single range test of this wheel uh, it's uh, and i rode for around 80 kilometers gps 
which was like a very usual test, maybe a bit more mild than uh, my usual day to day riding. But in general, the wheel should get you easily up to 70 kilometers, and then you would have probably some sort of 10% left uh, of battery. And well, then yeah, you need to just find a charge spot. This is quite a usual range for this type of wheel with this type of battery. A Kingsong 16X will have a better range than that, but this is also, I think, enough for a city commuter. However, for my personal use case, it is not enough as a single wheel. Very oftentimes I was going back with 30% battery after 50 kilometers or with, I don't know, 40%. And this is just like a, a battery percentage where you don't have all of the performance available anymore. So I still have, like after a while of riding on this wheel, I have it in, in the back of my mind that I don't have that much range. Uh, but for most users, I think it will be enough. And you can also really char charge it really quickly uh, with around two hours with a 10 amp charger because you can connect it to a 10 amp charger. I I'm waiting for a wheel by in motion which has like a 3000 watt hour battery. This is sort of like a size that I'm used to now with the Sherman, like the EXN, Monster Pro and the uh, upcoming veteran Sherman. Let's see how the veteran Sherman will perform. So yeah, when it comes to performance, that's it. Now let's talk about the features. This wheel is packed with features. And my question is, why no easy tire change? Like, I know it's not as hard as maybe on other wheels, but still you have to get out like 30 screws just to get the wheel out and change the tire. Like, please, at some point, just make a separate cable, face wire connector, MT60, disconnect it, couple of screws on the side for the L hangers and get it out. Why is it still so hard in this day and age to change a tire on a gosh darn wheel? Ah, it just annoys me because I know flat tires are not often a problem uh, on electric unicycles and personally I never had a flat tire but at some point you need to change the tire and please just make this process easier and unscrewing everything and then trying to open it up. Okay, rant over. In general, this wheel is also rather heavy for a 16 inch wheel. It weighs around 30 kilograms with the setup I have here with the lighter uh, Nilonova pedals, uh, pedals. So it's still manageable in day-to-day -day use, but if you are not that strong, probably it's better to have a 16X, which weighs around, I think, 34 kilograms. I mean, 24 kilograms, something like that. But it's still way lighter than a veteran Sherman at 37 kilograms. So I think it's, it falls somewhere in the middle of, in the midst of the category of like high-end uh, performance wheels. And, but then I have the next trend, and the question is, why are there no power pads stock? Like I already talked about it in in the right part, but this wheel is is like nothing is acceptable or accessible with the stock pads that you have here like it's not even reasonable to go fast on this wheel without any power pads so in motion is actually doing power pads they're making power pads for the v11 why don't they make anything for the v12 for the even more performance wheel so please wrap it up make some power pads for this gosh darn it and if you don't just buy torque pads Rant over. A thing I like about the V12 is that it has no fan, and I'm a fan of that. Because if you go into a store, it's quiet. If you go up hills, if you just if you're off-roading, nothing. And the temperature is generally also fine. So it's really cool that this wheel doesn't have any fan. Sometimes it gets uh, rather warm when I'm charging it, but I guess everything is dissipated by the huge heatsink in this wheel. Another thing that I appreciate so much now about this wheel is the kickstand and it is so practical. It's also pretty sturdy, even a dog couldn't like um, make it tip over. And if you go into the store, if you go anywhere and there is not a wall where you can lean again, lean that you see against, this comes in so handy. It's so seamless and it's so easy to use because as you can see, it just tucks in here very practically. You want to put it down, you don't even have to turn it off. You just do this with the lift switch and then it's off. So that is really awesome. The mud guard on the back could be uh, a bit better. It's not uh, one of the biggest sort of mud guards. I had a bit of like mud spraying on my backpack, but at the same time, it's also not super bad. I think that the power button is a bit awkwardly placed here on the top. I think it could be just somewhere in the front or somewhere closer to 
uh, the handle on the top. I just sometimes just search for it or I can't access it that easily. Uh, maybe there's some sort of better spot they could choose for the power button. I'm glad though that there is now this orange ring about it so I can find it. I think that the speakers are really great and we have two speakers in the front, two speakers in the back with passive radiators. The sound is really reasonable and it projects the sound in the front and in the back so if you're in a group ride both sides can hear you and if you're just listening to music also not loud. Uh, pedestrians might hear you or I know a cyclist with the with the music you're playing or with the sine wave function that I'll talk about later. But in general this quality is really good, it's loud and it has enough bass but naturally it's not like a JBL flip or like a pro JBL speaker. But still pretty reasonable, pretty good. That's how the speakers sound like. That's the song. from a different distance. Very loud too. So yeah, pretty solid. Now like with every Inmotion wheel, this Inmotion V12 has also uh, some updates available so over time this wheel would get, will get better. Like for example uh, the split ride modes was introduced with another update and maybe other features might be also int introduced in the future. I had some issues with logging all of the data via darkness bot so for some reason there is a lack of compatibility or some issues need to be resolved just something to keep in mind. Darkness bot doesn't work that well with the V12 in my use case with the software version I was using at the time of recording this review. When it comes to the lighting, because this is also very important, I like that there is the lights which shine down and these lights sort of, as you can see, won't be blinding others. Then you have the bright sort of, and then they, the beam goes a bit higher and then you can select both. Now, uh, uh, when we tested those lights, they're a bit brighter than, for example, the Gotway Nigla, but I think they're just not bright enough and especially uh, compared to the Emotion V11, which has an amazing set of lights. So, uh, I mean, this is enough sort of for most um, use cases, but if you want to speed up in the night a little and it's, it's wet or it's raining, then you need another headlight on your helmet, like a shred, shred light or like a magic shine thing um, to stay safe in the night because lighting is very important. So there's still some work to do with the lighting department here. I hope they improved it with the next wheel they made. And another issue is that it's always tilting in the same direction. So as you can see, my wheel is tilting a bit down in the front so the lights won't shine as far as they would in for example this setting so this is on the veteran sherman should be also on the v12 and of course we also have the rgb lights uh, on the side on the front and we have brake lights which are not visible and i think this is a big issue um, with the v12 because i had to always add this light here that's a gatherin um, w10 light because otherwise people won't see this in the night at all. By the way, I highly recommend this light and especially the more expensive ve version, which is the, where is it? I, I don't have it here. Which is the Gasron W10BS because then it also has a brake light function and it's like works so seamlessly, you just turn it on. And then if you leave the EUC for a while, it turns off by itself. So highly recommend any light. I just mounted it with some tape and uh, some Velcro. I think that's enough. Uh, it's a pretty convenient spot here on the trolley of the V12. But the problem with those RGBs is not that the lights aren't bright enough, because as I disassembled it, the, the LEDs are actually super bright, the, the strips, but the plastic here around, uh, which is the shell sort of of the wheel, is just so dark that it just doesn't let much light through. So if in motion would make like a clear version of this wheel, like a plastic that is actually see-through, uh, then the lights would be super bright and super convenient in nighttime use. Uh, because now as it, as it is not visible in the daylight at all and in the night it's just a little visible but it's definitely not enough. I hope they improve that uh, as said with like a clear version or just like partially clear plastics on the wheel. 
go. Of course, there's also the screen and there we can select many options. For example, you can select uh, what you want to see on the main screen. Uh, there's different options for that. I have the single mileage and maximum speed there, but you can select both of these options. Of course, the speed is also very visible and the screen is also visible in broad daylight and cloudy weather. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not as big as the veteran Sherman and I think that veteran Sherman still has a better screen and it's better because it has also tactile buttons. So all of the use, uh, all of the settings here, which are on the right, where you can select like the maximum speed, the pedal stiffness and all of this other stuff. I don't use the screen for that. I, I just use the app because this is just too fiddly, too difficult to use with gloves. And um, yeah, it's just a bit too small also for the settings. So typically I use the phone for setting up anything in the wheel. Then there's also another screen which is like a pro screen uh, where, where you can see more data and a long press here reveals all of the temperatures and even more data on the wheel which is really cool. I really like the amount of data that is available on the screen but with the data screen it's also not that visible so you usually need to stop or you really need to concentrate on the screen to see all of the data. So, so the main screen is what I use the most. Uh, sometimes I stop and I check the other data which is on the side screen but yeah, I think that maybe with a future version, they could make it just a bit bigger and make the UI and just a bit more friendly with bigger features, bigger sliders, more glove friendly and just a bit simpler. Uh, and the issue I found also with the screen is that it doesn't work when it's raining. So if the screen here is wet, then sometimes it just tends to slide over into the setting I don't want to see and I, then I can't uh, turn it back. So then I have to just wipe it with a tissue actually because with the hand is not enough and then I can go back to the main screen. Just a bit of a bummer. Maybe they can do something about that in the future. On this screen you can also set up a password when you turn on the wheel a a uh, pin code window will show up and you can just ride the wheel when you press the right pin code which is really which is a really cool option. I don't use it because I always have the wheel on standby next to me. Another cool feature when it comes to in motion wheels is that you can check the charge when the wheel is charging on your phone. Uh, you don't need to turn it on, you, you don't need to go close to it. You can just check via the app what is the battery state uh, of the wheel. And sadly, it also does connect with Bluetooth in um, with the Bluetooth speakers when it's charging. So just turn off your Bluetooth or turn off auto connects to the V12 because suddenly you'll have TikTok screaming out of your <laughs> in motion wheel when you're sitting on your toilet. And the Bluetooth also does work a little bit after you turn off the wheel for like a minute or two. Also a weird feature because when you turn off the wheel, technically it shouldn't work, but it still does. So that's that. Let's go back to yesterday. And we're back. Let's get back to the wheel and specifically the ride modes. And the ride modes here are very extensive. I would say that this is the most customizable wheel when it comes to the riding characteristic currently available on the market. And you can customize it on three levels. The first level or sort of or first mode is the selection of the modes themselves. Like usually you have hard, medium, soft. Here it is off-roading and commuting. And off-roading is the mo more stiffer mode, the one that reacts quicker onto your leaning. Um, and commuting is a bit more mellow for, they say, high, st high speed stability and it lets the pedals dip down a bit more than uh, the off-road mode. Now I didn't see such a huge difference between those two modes, but I was riding in uh, off-road mode for the added rigidity of the foot blade, sort of. The, the wheel wasn't leaning too much in it. So then the the second level is the pedal sensitivity and this is actually what you usually consider as soft medium hard mode in other electric wheels. So if you have the pedal sensitivity at 0% then the wheel will wobble around a lot. It will tilt with you if you accelerate, it will uh, tilt with you if you break. Uh, but I generally was just riding in 100% setting, so the stiffest setting, because that was my favorite way to ride on this wheel. And usually this is, or a combination of that, is where the wheel customization ends. But here in motion made something really amazing. They made the split ride modes, which is really amazing. So I was only able to try it out for a couple days because that's where I updated the wheel to the newest firmware and the split ride mode setting is pretty astonishing. So let me explain. There's a setting for both speeding and braking. So ex actually it would be maybe easier if they would say acceleration and braking, but 
well, let's let's call it speeding anyways. That's what it is in the app. So there's a slider between zero and 100%. But what does it mean? Well, check out the video now where I'm comparing the acceleration and the responsiveness between zero, 50% and 100% acceleration or speeding. So on 0%, the pedals dip down and uh, the acceleration isn't that instant. It's more of a mellow ride, more chill. At 50%, I would say it's usually just as the setting without the split ride mode. So that's how usually, usually the wheel works. And with speeding set on 100%, this wheel feels like a Godway. You don't believe me? Well, try it out yourself. Like Godways have this immense sort of power feeling, power uh, experience because the pedals go slightly up when you accelerate and this makes you feel like there's insane performance there and so sort of no limit. And if you set it at 100% the, 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 the foot plates stay flat and go ju up just a small bit and this really makes it feel like a Godway, like the ultimate performance machine. So this is quite amazing, quite astounding. And the, the amazing thing about it is you can also set it up anywhere in, in between if you feel like it. And I just talked about speeding because then there's also braking and, and you can set them up independently. So the way the foot plates worked in the acceleration, the wheel can also mimic that for braking. So at 0% the pedals will dip down. When you brake at 50% feels pretty much like it is usually and 100% it just stays really rigid and strong. So that's quite cool. And then my favorite setting in the short term as I was using this wheel uh, in, this, in these modes is 90 and 40%, so 90% speeding, 40% braking. So I still had really stiff pedals when, when it comes to acceleration, but when I was braking I wanted it a bit more, more mellow. And I felt like it controls the wobbles a bit better on this wheel. Uh, and, and a small caveat here is that when you're braking the pedals will go up and then when you're accelerating again you don't have the stiff foot plates immediately so it will go down to the uh, actual setting of the EUC that you set up via the pedal angle and then it becomes stiff so it's just, just like a bit mellow and then tsh, it clicks in and, and, and goes so just a small caveat here I think that's how it should be actually because you want to have uh, your usual pedal angle for acceleration and, and leaving it stiff so wow really bravo here amazing customization on the Emotion V12 and yeah, that's that's just awesome. When it comes to the charging and the ports on this wheel, we have a GX16-5 port here in the back, just like the Gotways and other 100 volt wheels. Uh, there's a single port, but I don't really mind that because it is 10 amps, which is a lot more than, for example, the Gotway RS and MSP. Uh, so they really went out of the way to make this charging really, really quick. I usually use a 7.5 amp charger for this wheel and it's really quick, like it's under 2 hours I feel like, uh, or just around 2 hours, but I never have it at 0%, so it feels really quick. I just plug it in and suddenly, oh, it's fully charged. So that's cool. And with the sock charger I charge it overnight or if I have more time because then it's fanless, it doesn't annoy me that much, but it takes a while, it takes around 9 hours from 0%. Uh, so then there's also the USB-A port and USB-C port for your phone charging, which um, I don't know where there's both, but hey, that's what we got. There's also a charge flap, which is also really nice, feels really sturdy. And the good thing about it is that even if you forget to close it, it's not a tragedy. Like, uh, it's not like a, on a gotway when you when water is just seeping in on the top uh, to, um, to the wheel. So remember to close it but it's not that bad maybe with a magnet inside here somewhere on the bottom would be easier to just like close it automatically but it's as said not not really bad also all of the sounds on this wheel are also customizable as well as the rgb on the side i didn't do it extensively here but you can select your colors in the front and the back um, everything is really really customizable another nice thing i forgot to say about the uh, kickstand is that it actually locks the rear wheel in place so it's not possible to actually let the wheel roll backwards because the stand itself is blocking the tire so really cool then there's also a couple nice features regarding the balancing system of the wheel so first up we have assisted balancing so if this feature is off the wheel will just like sort of fall forward uh, if it's not on but if i turn it on then it sort of has a small amount of power to let it lift up um, the front just if it's like falling forward too much. It's really cool and I suggest you try it on your own. It's kind of difficult to explain but it's a really nice option on this wheel. Then there's also load detection which uh, worked 
I, I know, a bit of hit or miss on this wheel. So essentially, if you lift up the wheel without pressing the lift switch here, then it would turn off. And sometimes it, it worked, but sometimes it didn't. Uh, so it's a bit of a hit or miss here. The sound that it makes while doing so, it's the same as on the 9BOT Z10. So maybe a little homage to the Z10 here. Uh, all in all, I think it's a useful option, especially if you just lift the wheel up accidentally or you didn't, don't press right on the lift switch and then the wheel won't spin out of control, which is really nice. Or if it falls to the side a bit awkwardly or, it's, or, or if it start, starts spinning on a slippery surface, really cool option. But maybe it could be just somehow better via software. I don't really know how to improve that, but in terms of the lift switch, it works great. It's really easy to press. It's a big button too and it works well. And the cool thing is that the handle is really nice to grip as well as nice to grip when the trolley handle is up. Now the trolley handle, it's a bit of an awkward potato here. It's really nice because it's sturdy and it locks in place nicely, but I feel it's like, it's a bit hard to put it up. That's what she said. And also the grip here is very awkward. So on the V12, this rear part here, is more angled so it's easier to turn this wheel around with this one it's really just weird to push it around like if you have it next to you it's doable and don't get me wrong it's just it's not like outright bad it's just very uncomfortable to turn the wheel around on the spot because you have just like so little leverage on this um, trolley handle to turn it around so some improvement could be made here uh, but it's also not that bad. It's the same height as the Emotion V11 for reference. Just as an idea, I think there's another mode missing from this wheel. If, if we're already going crazy with all of the tech features, uh, I think wheels in general should have something like a shopping mode. So if you're going to a shopping mall or if you're just strolling the wheel around, I think that the wheel should have a top speed limit of like 10 or 15 kilometers an hour. Because what sometimes happens is the wheel might spin out of control when you're standing on a slippery surface or you just lift up the wheel awkwardly or, or, or it tilts a bit too much and the tire loses grip and it starts you know uh, to to burn rubber this happened to me once in a store pretty awkward so I would wish that if you for example put up the trolley handle or just press a button here or turn on the mode on uh, your app you would go into shopping mode and the wheels top speed would be 15 kilometers an hour if you go over that it would just like lean forwards like it does with the assistant balancing mode so an idea for you in motion if you grab it just call it wrong way shopping but anyways now we move on to the last point when it comes to practicality functionality and all of the other stuff uh, the wheel is really quick to pick up balance so if you fall on it and it goes on the side especially when off-roading you just lift it up and it pff, immediately notice notices it's upright and then you can go on. On the Gotways it usually takes a while for the uh, for the balancing system to happen. Also on a Sherman sometimes it understands that it's upright sometimes it doesn't and here it's really really robust really solid it just immediately goes into balancing mode and that's great. So those this was the extensive exhausting list of uh, features and practicality on the Emotion 12 V12. Now we can go on to the conclusion. Okay, so to conclude it all, first up, I think this is an amazing riding wheel and it brings me so much joy and fun to ride this thing around. The cornering is amazing, the acceleration is really solid, the top speed is more than you usually need in day-to-day -day riding. Some ramps that are usually not accessible and not that much fun on the veteran Sherman with tight spaces, on this thing is just a joy. And as well as, as, well as doing some pirouettes, doing some maneuvering, because it just ticks so many boxes, it's so much fun to ride in the city. And that's the first thing I think of when I want to conclude the V12. I think that all in all, the safety and durability is on a pretty high level. Some things are still left to be desired, but we're already on a pretty good safety level on this wheel and durability so maybe the v13 would be an improvement but i think it's safe to buy this wheel and also store it at home i think that the tech here is also amazing all of the functionality is really great and in motion really tries harder to take all of the boxes and then deliver or over 
deliver even some more. I, I think that there's a lot of innovation of this in this wheel and a lot of the tech is actually useful and not just gimmicks. When it comes to the range, in day-to-day -day use it is sort of enough in most cases but if you are used to a wheel with a bigger battery or with or you're riding a high torque wheel this will probably have less range so you would either need to get a fast charger for this wheel uh, preferably like a small one that you can carry around because in my use case oftentimes I, I would want to ride further but I was already at 30% I would have to start thinking that I need to go home and I don't have the same performance at 30% as I have at for example 70 or 80 so I understand the choice of battery size here and it's also reasonable it's also bigger than uh, the V11 the charging is very solid but in general when it comes to like long rides or you're really just doing a lot of commuting this might be have just a battery that's a bit too small and then i would consider upgrading to a veteran sherman or a veteran abrams and the veteran abrams i will review in the near future now i know that it's priced a bit higher than the other gotways but i think the price is justified and especially with the new findings when it comes to gotway wheels the quality issues and the, the flimsy durability and safety i think it's worth to pay the extra on this wheel if you are not feeling really like the extra is enough value for you then i think it's either worth to go with a king song 16x which is cheaper than this wheel i mean it depends on the distributor but in, I, I think in general it's cheaper or then go balls to the balls and get a veteran sherman but the veteran sherman still has some downsides over the v12 for example the battery packs are not secured that well as on the v12 it doesn't have a kickstand and uh, the and it definitely doesn't feel as nimble as the V12. Now this is not a comparison video but between those two but those two wheels are really different and for the price you're paying you're getting a different machine altogether. But if you want just more range than Veteran Sherman uh, will be the bigger value for you. And last up I think that this wheel is a pro wheel like it could be called V12 Pro for me because the riding um, riding this wheel as speed is not as easy as bigger wheels like it takes some getting used to for to avoid the train tracking or get used to the train tracking it takes time to like get this wheel to turn well because this acquires like super hard turns acquire really a lot of effort and a lot of good balance and when it comes to hard braking there's also a bit of wobbles so you need to learn to control it all to really get everything out of the wheel so I think that definitely this wheel is for a pro rider now you can start riding on it but you won't unlock every feature or every possibility on it right away it will take time to learn it and get the most out of this wheel when it comes to the comparison between the Nikola and the V12 I think straight up the V12 is the right choice especially in light of the recent issues with Gotway wheels and I think it also rides better than the, V12, than the Nikola, the clearance is better than the Nikola, the range is probably pretty similar, maybe even the Nikola has more range because of the lightness but yeah I know that hardcore Gotway fans might not agree with me but I think that in most measurable way this wheel is better than the Nikola. I, I mean I am sure that I would get it over it. One last thing I forgot to say it's pretty big actually like it's as big as the Sherman. So yeah this is my V12 review I hope I didn't bore you to death and if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this mate. Okay sorry subscribe to see more content like this I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.